pods. I've joined a recording. Okay. Um, so it's awesome to be here today with you all. Um, I'm excited to hear everybody sing. And uh, I'm with Converse College and I also, uh, you know, have a background as an opera singer, classical singer, um, done, a, done a whole lot of stuff. Um, uh, it's trained at Juilliard, uh, was in the Lindemann Young Artist Program at the Met. I made my Met debut in the Macropolis case. Um, Few, been a few years ago now, um, as Krista, and uh, spent a lot of time in Austria and Germany, festing, guesting, um, competitions, uh, you know, anything you want to ask me, <laughs> working in the States, working there, singing, singing here, there, wherever, um, opera and concerts uh, and oratorio. So love all three. Got my start uh, with musical theater in high school. I call it sort of the entry level uh, drug to opera. That's <laughs> where I fell. I fell in love with um, just uh, that medium of telling a story, right? With music and communicating uh, in that way, the way that music and the human voice especially can just describe things that are hard to put into words. Just so, um, anyways, that's enough about me. Who's first up? Um, I forget the order that she just listed. So you probably know who's going first. Okay, well, Marianne was supposed to go first, but I don't see her here. So how about we go ahead and get I'm started? Here. Oh, I'm you are? Here. Oh, okay, perfect. The wrong name is under. Okay. You're okay. Adam. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hi, Marianne. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. And what would you like to sing for us today? Um, I was singing Seven Crudele. Nice. You know, I have my score somewhere. Uh, I know it pretty well. So that's good. Go ahead. Fantastic. So I just get started? Yeah. Or if you want to, yeah, we can chat about if you want to tell us just uh, what this is about and the composer. I love the 24 Italian songs and arias. Love when, love when people sing those. Not only are they beautiful pieces, but they just, they teach us so much about singing, right? So, um, so in a, in a little blurb, what is this piece about? Um, so kind of like the translation is like, it says like, although cruel, cruel one, you make me languish always faithful. It's like kind of a sad song. Um, I don't know totally what it's about, but, um, I do know it conveys like a lot of sadness. Um, and it's about kind of love. Oh, sorry. It's sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> I was on mute. Um, so that's great. And thank you for that. And ready when, whenever you are. Thank you. 
That's okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. How far were you to in this arrangement to the end? Do you want to just start um, working just, now? Or? Um, it was just like the line before the end. Okay. All right. If you're comfortable just leaving that out, I'm, we can just start working. Yeah? Okay. Okay. My music is right here. Let me grab it. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful job. Thank you. All right. The very uh, utilitarian backpack because it just gets so heavy, right? The scores just don't get any lighter. <laughs> I gave up with these really stylish handbags a long time ago in New York because I just was throwing my back out. <laughs> so, no. Um, all right, so I've got two arrangements of this. I ha are you working out of the purple book or the G. Shermer, the Peyton purple or the my old beat up copy of the Shermer? Do you know? Which one? Um, I'm not sure. I think I'm, you might have oh, a different yeah, one. I'm just gonna the okay. 24th right. Yes, fantastic. So what I want to um, work on, lovely, beautiful sound. Um, a couple things with the Italian, and also, um, how much have you done with uh, spoken work? moving right into singing, sort of speaking on the breath, speaking the language on the breath. Have you done a bit, a fair amount of that? Um, a little bit, not a lot. Um, this is kind of a piece I came back to a little bit ago because um, I was mostly working on my piece that I submitted. Um, so this is something I kind of came back to. Um, okay. But a little bit, but not really a lot. All right, no, no, great. Um, where, which page is this? 19. Um, so my big, I guess you would call it a philosophy. I don't know, I've never actually, but this is my, I don't have a printed, my philosophy is, you know, you, you will, your speech habits have so much to do with the song phrase, right? Or the, the, the singing coordination, yeah, because, um, what we do, right, with singing is we're elongating the exhale. Yep, this coordinated exhale that we're amazingly, miraculously, we're able to hold our bodies open posturally in such a way to manipulate that diaphragm. And it's not about inhaling gobs and gobs and gobs of air, right? It's kind of like a swimmer. Any swimmers out there, lap swimmers? or runners, I mean, yeah, but swimming is, is to me the best example. You know, you can take the same amount of air in and choose to do three strokes or five strokes. I mean, it's all about um, uh, parceling out that exhale. And it, it is kind of a miracle that we don't just fall over and get dizzy. Like we can slow that respiration cycle down, right? So anyways, all that to say, spoken monotone. I do a lot of it, it, it serves a couple purposes. It helps us practice diction without wasting vocal gold time, right? Like we can only use our voice even well a, a certain amount of hours a day for longevity and stamina sake, right? We don't want to sing ourselves out. Um, it helps us practice diction, helps us train the brain, which in my opinion, the instrument is the brain, right? I mean, we have the vocal cords in, in the middle of the throat, the lungs, but the brain is the supercomputer that sends the signal that coordinates all of these functions and all of these 
um, uh, parts of our body that posturally uh, we can get at the diaphragm, the involuntary muscle and, uh, you know, elongate that respiration cycle that way. So speaking helps us keep the ribs open and helps us use these postural stabilizing muscles down here, which um, gives us full access to our rib cage. And it's, it's not a hard exercise. It's simply taking the Italian, let's see, page 19, and keeping the ribs open and the air flowing through all your vowels and especially all your consonants. Um, so for instance, can you say for me, you know the Italian, Seben crudele mi fai languir. Okay, so there's two ways to do this. We'll hop, skip, and jump to the, the rhythm. You would speak the Italian in the rhythm of the piece. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And what we're going for is, I call the breath, um, I don't have a lot of time to, I mean, 101 crash course on breath. <laughs> you know, breathe in. Uh, I, I like to think of it as a Christmas tree, sort of like in, down, and out. Yep. Um, so that gives us 360 degree expansion of the ribs. Our knees are nice and soft. I don't think you can see my whole posture if I stand up, but um, enough. So um, soft knees give me access. It, it can unbows my back. So it gives me more of a flat back. It gets rid of that C curve and, and locked knees. So in this posture, soft knees, head is an extension of the spine, rib cage, breathing in, down and out laterally and I add these sort of flank ribs, right? So I'm getting this full expansion here. And you would speak, breathe in as if you were about to sing, but you're going to speak, okay? Give it a try. Um, Seven crudele, me fi long Good, 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 very good. Try that one more time, La linger longer. That's a hard one to say on the vowels, okay? Um, and it's going to train and strengthen these intercostal muscles, okay? That's we need that up the so the diaphragm can apoja um, with well against the different organs and um, in the rib cage. So seven That's my song phrase, right? So. All right, so as I speak, I'll sing, yeah? That coordination. Try it one more time. Spoken. Seven cool me five long Good, keep going. Sempre fedele, sempre fedele, ti voglio amare. Okay, great. Now, I would challenge you to even linger longer and put the consonants as late as possible to the following syllable, okay? So, seben crudele mi fai languir. Rapid consonants as late as possible. Um, with air through them, even the unvoiced ones, right? Try it one more time. We, well, we, what, this is, ex, what this exercise also achieves is that we want to get rid of um, straight tone, I think. We want vibrato in almost, well, in all of the pitches. Then we can add straight tone back in sort of as an effect um, and a choice. Um, but we want the most freest line because our brain, the instrument thrives off of that airflow, not pressure. And vibrato is a natural manifestation of that free airflow, right? So you find that first, in my opinion, spoken on the breath. And then there's some other things you can do. Um, you find the legato in the language, okay? Especially with Italian. Um, so we have our two minute mark. Uh, so speak one more time, the first phrase for me, and then we'll sing it right after you speak it, okay? Seven me fai long me. Yeah, do you feel the difference? It's sort of a very, I mean, yes, a lot of my students say, oh no, not the computer voice, not the monotone computer voice. And it is, it's, it's not meant to be expressive in that sense, right? We first access that free airflow 
and then then we use that to make choices and to um you know, ex be expressive. So we find the airflow in the language, in the line. So the speech is not tangled or uh, tensing around the language. And then we move to, and, and next the progression in my uh, way that I would approach this is we would sing this on a neutral vowel, like E. And then, so kind of like pianists do hands separate voice, right? We speak the words, we sing the tune on a the vowel. They're separate. Then we merge them together after that. Yeah, so um, with our last probably 30 seconds, <laughs> uh, can you sing this on an E vowel for me? Just a nice free flow. Oh, that's time. So practice that. <laughs> Spoken, singing immediately so you don't have too much time to overthink. Um, and then add the words into that after you've done that on a vowel, all right? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Best of luck. And keep working on these songs. So good. Okay. Time flies when you're talking about the best thing in the world, singing. <laughs> All right. Um, who's next? Uh, I think it's Chloe. Chloe, are you ready? Okay, you're up next. I need to un unmute, which I always forget to do, and then I'm halfway through talking. And <laughs> oh yeah, hello, <laughs> nice to meet Hi, you. Hi, Chloe. I'm Chloe from France, and I'm gonna sing uh, Fior di Ligi, uh, Come Scolio. Fantastic. Um, let me see. Yeah, I think I have the score somewhere around here. Okay. Uh, okay. Temerari, sortite fuori di questo loco, e non profumi il rito in fausto degli infamenti, nostro cuore, nostro orecchio, i nostri affetti.
No, it's okay. If you want to sing it again, you can. <laughs> that was, <laughs> once is enough. Yeah, that was wonderful. What a fantastic piece for your voice. I love it so much. It's one of the best arias. Have you done the role? No, actually, I'm, uh, I graduated in 2019 and uh, mm -hmm. 2020 was my year of you know audition and contests and this kind of things and mm -hmm. so I kind of did some uh, I did the, the competition actually uh, the CS competition mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. yeah, some others and yeah I'm, I'm trying to That's... be professionalized. Oh my gosh it's you know learn her other aria as well so I always say like you know if you're going to offer an audition or an aria in auditions you want to be sure that you know if you were asked to do that immediately, you have the role in your pocket, right? And Per Pietà is much, even longer than Come Scolio, but um, this aria is just, it has everything. It has a high C. It has, what is it, a low B or a low A? I forget. Um, uh, a. It's a low A. I, I don't want to waste time finding my score. It, it's somewhere, somewhere back there. <laughs> but um, yeah, okay. Here's the thing with this piece. Um, and it's it's fantastic. Do you use it for auditions yet, or is it new? Is it brand new? Uh, it's uh, I did competitions, not not auditions yet, but I okay. Well, yeah, competition. Yeah, it, competitions and audition for a competition. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um. So I really pitches are made in the brain. Yep. Especially when we talk about coloratura, right? Because I find a lot of times it can be. Pitch is not a locate is not you know a location I can find with my throat, and I'm not saying I, I saw this um, in your singing, but it can help color to her even more because you really are hearing the pitch in your brain. That brain is sending the signal to the vocal cords and the apparatus, the diaphragm, faster than we can calculate. Those cords are stretching for those pitches, 
And it's just, it's happening so quickly. We can't, we can't micromanage it, right? So if you are, are trusting that those pitches are being made in the brain and your, your support is going to respond to those, those um, uh, cues, you, the color, the air will move faster. Trust me. <laughs> so, and you'll be able to feel like, uh, oh, I can sing these triplets. Uh, and that was a, that was a bold tempo. I, I, and I like that tempo um, because, but it's one of those things where you, you have to really keep it on, on, on the reins, you know, <laughs> the horse, uh -huh. you know, in front of the court or in front of the cart. Um, so the high notes are absolutely fantastic. I don't, I don't have anything to say about those except for please keep singing them because everybody needs to hear them. They're beautiful. And how to, it sounds really comfortable for you in all these ranges, right? Because that's the virtuosity of this role. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's like for almost three different voices <laughs> in a way. Um, yeah, but it's fantastic. You're negotiating these chest uh, moments, the, the, uh, through those like um, voix mix and then into the middle voice and then into the passaggio. I feel like there's a couple ways that we can smooth that out just a little bit more and make it even easier so that when you start the coloratura, the column of air is just, it's completely steady. And the other thing with this aria, right, is like, it's so, um, which is every time I hear it, I, I not snicker or laugh, but uh, you know, because each girl sort of falls later, you know, she's like, we're so faithful. You can't do anything to sway us. And, you know, then they, you know, you, you see how they're tempted and, and you know, what's happening late, what's going to happen later, but, but Theodore Ligi doesn't in that moment. So she's just so like, how do you, you know, bold, you bold ones, tell it out, you know, like, you know, how dare you um, flirt with us and try to try to have your way with us. In the absence of our sweethearts, um, we will remain faithful. So um, let's, I don't know how you want to do it with the accompaniment, or if you just want to sing a cappella to work a couple of phrases. Yeah. I don't know what, what you find the best uh, would be. Let's do a cappella. Um, because I think the tape okay. will take too much time. So um, remind me, uh, what is the first start note here? To the B flat? Let's see if I have it right behind me here. Uh, on the, on the um, aria or? Yeah, on the recit actually. Let's have it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Temerari is a B flat, I think. Temerari uh, is, uh, is a C. It's a C, okay. Alrighty. Ah. Uh, now right back down into the middle voice. So the line also with Fear to Lead You when you do the roll, it's that it's stamina is the name of the game. And I had a coach one time that said you have to find the place, the places to sit down and put your feet up and just file your nails. Because <laughs> if you go, you know, 110% with her, she's so fiery and passion you don't want it to go here right and yeah. you want to have voice to spare at the end of the opera and you all um so uh can you sing this for me the opening line Fantastic. I just wanted to do that first phrase because when we did it initially, it had a little too much, um, a little too much pressure instead of flow. And I think that's just because the character gets, Yes. I, I totally identify with that. Yes. Because you want to emote, right? Every, like as an, as a, as a singing actor. So, but we never want to emote here. So it's straddling that line of choices mentally that the free air uses those and we're not closing down the instrument or overloading the the airflow um and and the best way that i've always found um there's different dramatic schools of thought and, and process for that but using the diction and expressing the mechanics of the text and really biting into the words can help you stay on the column without you know it's a long aria so that's like the first bar you just sort of want to you know uh, not give away too much too soon. Oh my gosh, that's time. Okay, that's time. Okay. <laughs> oh no. So here, one last thought. Um, use the speaking exercise that I was uh, working with before mm -hmm. in the rhythm of the piece on your breath, okay? And then speak a phrase, sing a phrase. Speak a phrase, 
Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Best of luck. Thank you. Okay. Warm, warm in here. Whew. Okay, so next we have Stephanie. Are you ready? Perfect. Hi, Stephanie. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't be, please don't be nervous. I know, I know I can say, you know, just don't, don't be nervous. <laughs> I'll be singing Prendi per me sei libero from Le Oh, fantastic. Great, great, great. Oh, gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. So is this a new piece for you? Oh, you just moved. Hang on to my screen. Okay, there you are. <laughs> um, is this a newer piece for you or older? I learned it like last week. 
10 days. Oh, wow. 10 days. 10 days. So I would say it's new. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. So perfect for your voice. Um, I want to work on a couple, um, talk about some vowels. Yep. Vowels. Um, she's like, yeah, we'll talk about vowels. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Vowels are everything. Um, they shape the vocal tract. You know, the tongue is the connection of all these different muscles. And it's about disciplining the tongue, the correct part of the tongue to make a vowel without involving uh, other parts that don't need to be involved. Right. Um, so vowels are made on the middle of the tongue and and for not not super far on the back of the tongue the back of the tongue responds to what what's going on in the middle and um that's why italian is so great to start learning about your voice because that language itself just spoken is right off the middle of the tongue all the a, e, I, o, u, all the pure vowels ricocheting right off the hard palate and then the song voice will turn over i believe into the soft palate when it needs to per airflow that is consistent um, out of the instrument, right? So um, can we start the uh, first? Because I heard just a little bit, and this could be hit nerves. Listen, I remember in competitions or, or auditions, those first couple notes, right? You're sort of like, down diaphragm, down. It's okay, it's okay, we can be down, you know? And you sort of feel like, whoa, okay. Um, you know, and sometimes the pitch can go up just a little bit sharp and um, the vowels are your best friend with that, okay? Because how close are all of my vowels on my tongue? Actually, before you sing the first uh, phrase for me, say, say on your breath, like we did before, you know, you can always, uh, uh, um, very monotone with the ribs wide as if you were about to sing, but speak. I, how little can I move my tongue? <laughs> when I make those vowels, aim them off the hard palate, I am off the middle of the tongue. Yeah, really good. And another thing you can do is put an L in front of them. La, le, li, lo, lu, because it shows you where the tip is and the middle is right behind the tip. <laughs> middle is actually not as far back on the tongue as, as we perceive it. We don't want the tongue to come super far forward in the mouth. Yeah, so la, le, li, lo, lu. La, le, li, lo, lu. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Now sing the first, if you would, please, the first couple uh, notes, acapella, yeah? Yeah. Good. Keep going. Good, 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 good. Okay, that's a G. So I really believe pure vowels on the staff, pure vowels as much as you get. And the voice will modify itself, you know, when it needs to turn over. I really do believe that above the staff. C, right there, that eval is your best friend and that beautiful uh, messa di voce there, gorgeous. All right, so you can put that N and D as late as possible, okay? And really repeat that shape of that vowel on that tongue, just like you're doing a split second longer and the air will just spin, okay? Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, so it's a difference. Yes, I really am not a believer in aiming back. Not that what you're doing is back. Aiming everything off the hard palate and then it sort of turns right up behind your nose into the dark space behind your eyes. Instead of be off the hard palate, just like you did. And then sorry, I never did. But what I'm interested in is when you go back down to the middle voice, I need a real eval. All right, so prendi uh, per me. Start from from right there. Yeah, 
Yes, 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 yes. Yes, very good, very good. Um, I had one thought, uh, lost it. Oh yeah, jaw tongue. Um, the jaw doesn't make the vowels. Jaw's hanging by its own weight, just kind of slack. Gravity's your best friend. And those vowels are on the middle of the tongue. I hear the jaw, again, I'm not in the same room as you, but I hear maybe the jaw wanting to be part of those vowels. And the jaw, I had a teacher one time, but yeah, she's like, I, I feel like, yeah. yeah. So it wants um, to join the party. <laughs> it wants to join the party. And I had a teacher that said one time, you put your jaw in the other room. And I thought that was the weirdest thing. And, uh, but it makes sense. The jaw hangs out. I can sing inside, right? My jaw, you can't see from the outside, right? But this ball is hunk of joint up here, nice and relaxed and it's neutral. So the tongue is making the vowel forms. So just take a minute, close your eyes for a second and feel your jaw get really heavy. And it's going to hang down by its own weight. So I say, if you're, you feel like you're about to drool, time to sing. <laughs> so, all right, good, good, good. Yeah, and again, it's not gonna look hugely open on the outside, but you're gonna feel, as with anything with singing, we talk about a mini adjustment and it feels massive inside, right? It's just like, oh my gosh, you know, but nobody can really see that outside, you know, unless you're a teacher and you're sort of like tuned into the, like the root, you know. But um, all right, sing that for me one more time uh, and add the second phrase to it right after. Excellent job. I saw your little ha hand reminder. So and that's uh, so a two minute warning here. Um, what I call the jaw cradle. Take your hands and pointers on the hinge. These fingers right here, kind of under the cheekbones. And again, not grabbing like, a, like a, uh, anything violent here. Um, and then the pinkies right on the bottom of the chin. And allow your jaw to rest in your hand. Okay? Like that. Now, your jaw is going to want to grab, and what happens as soon as the jaw grabs, the ribs get confused and they usually collapse. The, the, the jaw can really lock you out of a support that's really working well um, because it pulls up the back of the tongue, which is why we also don't want the tongue too far forward in general in the mouth because it raises the larynx. And we don't ever want a vowel to pull up the position of our instrument, right? This hoists up this gets tight right around the solar plexus where that has to be ribs wide, buoyant, engaged. Humming, let's say anything, uh, uh, this also for everybody, humming your melodies uh, is, is a great way to observe that coordination and muscle isolation. So wide ribs, not tightening up under sort of the underwire of your uh, bra, all that. So um, try the little jaw cradle and sing the opening phrase for me one more time. And I love the airflow through the consonants, your P's, your B's, that's not stopping the air. Use every voice consonant you can, like I hear R's, M's, N's. Um, sing the opening phrase to me. Just having your jaw rest there and the tongue is active, right? Okay, go ahead. Yes, awesome. How'd that feel? Um, so different because I think the nerves was from how uncomfortable I felt, like being so cradled backwards. But here mm. I just feel like there's nothing to be nervous about because it's just there on its it, own. Yes, yes, yes. The voice is like a car. It is like a luxury car that just loves to be run when it's being used well. I mean, this, right? And, and it's like self-generating when you start to use, you know, in a, in a show, you know, the voice war it just stays warm and gets warmer and warmer and warmer as the night goes on. It's, it's um, depending on the opera, but what I'm saying is when it, it likes to be used well. And uh, I really believe off the hard palate, not back. 
okay? Because that keeps the vowels pure. That keeps the air, it will turn up when it needs to without us getting tighter, higher in the body, right? The support stays low and that gives the ribs context. Yeah, so practice that because out of the middle voice, I know we have to stop, out of the middle voice into the passaggio is the number one. We cannot listen to ourselves, right? Because we are not a good judge of what's coming right out of our mouth because we're not hearing all the resonance and all the ways that the sound is bouncing off of our, we're like a human cello. We're not hearing the, fin the finished product. The minute we start listening, the jaw usually grabs. You just trust that the support's in line and that that's making the most coordinated and beautiful sound. Best of luck. And thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, this is so fun. I could do this all night. <laughs> beautiful. Such talented singers. Yay. Okay, so then our last singer is. Um, hold up. Sorry, I just lost it. Okay, right here. Rebecca. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm great. I'm trying to figure out how to make myself bigger. Do I need to make myself bigger? I mean, I can see, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I'm Rebecca Carroll. I'm gonna be singing um, Omi El Babi No Caro by Puccini. Yay. So are you ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm using my phone for a track. Great. I admire all of you. <laughs> The other ladies, is this new? Uh, really no, beautiful. this is not new. I couldn't find an accompanist in time, but the track is new. <laughs> so that was a little, you know. <laughs> no, I mean, listen, like I said, I admire all of you for the work you're doing with the tracks. I, I know that that's a whole other animal. <laughs> so, yes, um, to say the least. Yeah. Um, so, so it's, so you've worked on it a bit. Um, I want to talk about vowels also. Um, and just this, this beautiful sound. Well, I feel like I want, again, I, I'm not in the room. I'm sort of like, I want to reach in and like see what people's <laughs> ribs are doing and see their torsos and all this. And um, right, so right. it sounds like I would love 
yeah. So I would love a little bit more just rib compression underneath that glorious sound, right? And and starting the phrases before that like micro collapse of the ribs, speaking the Italian on the breath is going to help immensely as well because we start the spoken sound with that wide rib cage and low engagement um, before the ribs have a chance to collapse and we're programming mm -hmm. that into our brain as the song phrase, yep. So um, say, right. say for me, a, e, i, o, a, o, u. Yeah. So I hear just a couple diphthongs sometimes in the uh, in the Italian. Also, I heard a couple. I didn't have time to. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is nitpick diction, and I just it's I geek out on it. Um, but some of the T's uh, around the board, make sure those are more dental DTs in Italian. Yeah, um, so not quite as aspirate. Uh, so, could you sing the first phrase for me uh, once more? Are we? You there? Are we frozen? I hope we're not frozen. Don't you want it? Did you want the song? Yeah, just, just in the beginning. I think we got a little bit cut, uh, broken in and out. Oh. oh. Yeah, I think we have a really rough connection. Yeah. Um, yeah, my internet is really fun. But I Did you even hear any of that? Yeah, I heard it a lot. <laughs> like, and it was a little, but um, it seems like we're in real time now. So while we're <laughs> so you didn't. No, I heard it. I heard a great bit of it. I'm trying to think what we should do. Um, Hmm. Okay, so can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yes, I can hear you. So let's take a look at, um, remember what I said about the, the vowels, right off the middle of the tongue, right off the hard palate. And you don't necessarily need to grab on the, on the back of the tongue to make a vowel smaller or to kind of keep the airflow going, okay? So, Oh, mio babino caro. Just say that for me on the breath. Oh, mio babino caro. Good. So the O is after the E's. Same place in the tongue. Same area. The tongue doesn't need to plunge to find that vowel. Oh, mio babino. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, hard palate. Okay. Right where the teeth touch the skin. Oh, mio babino caro. Yeah. Oh, mio babino caro. Yeah, so say the word mamma for me. Mamma. It's very bright, right? That's the Italian ah. Ah, ah, eh, 
Mama. O U. Yeah. Good, good, good. So. <laughs> you don't need to move the tongue so much for that the, that vowel combination. Just scout that for me. The, that pitch. Good, good, good. Speak it for me one more time. I hear the ribs collapsing ever so slightly. I'm like um, hunched over. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. So I can. <laughs> so, oh mio. Oh, oh mio. Oh, speak it first. Mio. Good, good, good. Speak it. Speak it. I'm sorry, what? Speak it. Oh, oh. mio. Oh mio. Oh mio. Yeah. Mio. Oh. No dip tongue. Oh mio. Oh, oh, so no dip tongue. Oh, I hear me. oh. I hear two sounds. I just need to hear one. Pure vowel. Oh, oh, me. oh, better, oh. better. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. So the tongue doesn't need to move for two sounds, right? Because it's a, it's just one vowel. Oh, me. Oh, oh, me. That's my yeah, internet. That's yeah. it. <laughs> that's okay. So now. The airflow starts the sound, not the back of the tongue and not the vowel. Okay. So you have to feel that airflow. It is already flowing. Yes, much better. So the vowel is not holding up, it's not supporting the instrument, right? Yeah. And when that happens, that's the back of the tongue grabbing and then the jaw grabs, right? That locks us out of our ribs. Yeah. So mm, hum this for me. Mm. Yeah, one more time. Just the first three pitches, not the high A flat. Humming is not super oh. helpful above the staff. Okay. Yeah. All right. This. This third moving into C, which is, is you know, traipsing on Passaggio uh, uh, land. <laughs> um, Keep the support. The support does not follow the instrument that way in the ribs. The ribs do not come up and the tongue does not come up to find a higher pitch. Pitches are made in the brain. So my ribs are wide. It's like, boom, it just stays. Just like the cellist is not gonna take the cello and start swinging it around. <laughs> to find different right? different pitches right <laughs> we that play the instrument yeah <laughs> we play the instrument in the same way okay yes i like to think of the support down here as an inverted triangle that is no higher than the bottom of my belly button okay you want me to hold so, so like this well, well you, you can't can. see me so um, this is ah there you go that's great Sort of like, I know that seeing everybody's faces is important, but I'm like, I want to see everybody's torso. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, you want me to sing O Mio Babino Caro like this? Yes, but wherever your belly button is, okay? I don't want any tightness north of the belly button, okay? This is, these ribs are wide. This is buoyant when you hum. It's the best demonstration of that. Okay, do you feel that? You can't grab this and hum at the same time. Do you hum and you feel the buzz on the upper lip? And again, this is useful for on the staff, above the staff, we don't want to be tightening. But it, but I really believe that we build the voice from the middle voice out. Okay, so pure vowels. Oh, yes, voice, absolutely. The middle voice. Yeah, so humming is the best way to see that in action without grabbing in the wrong places, but, but the whole posture supporting itself. Yeah, so. Well, that way I keep the vowel and the air rides over the vowel, okay? The vowel doesn't go with the pitch, okay? Yes. Um, so try that one more time. So those top, I know we have to stop. Um, this inverted, Ooh. bottom of the inverted triangle is right below the belly button, okay? Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. I think, so, no, yeah, we've got to stop, unfortunately. Yeah, because um, we're running out of time. <laughs> that's okay, but that's exactly right. That first third, you didn't lift, you contracted here, and that's that's the way. Okay. Wait. All right.
Best of luck. Thank you so much, Thank everybody. Thank you very much. Everybody sounded so good. That was awesome. Oh, thank um, you. We have a few minutes. If anybody has any questions, if not, that's okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Stephanie, go ahead. Um, so you mentioned that the humming is, sorry, it's a technical question. That the humming yeah, no, that's fine. I love my favorite. <laughs> Um, I, just because of my voice type, I'm always having to sing up there above the staff, but I'm having a lot of trouble. So is there like something like humming, but for maybe something above the staff that helps the boys? Yeah. Okay. So when you said like, uh, is there a typical note or area where you say you're having trouble? Does that mean like you're tightening or you just feel less free? Like what, do, what would you? As soon as I get to like, for example, um, the A a high a. yeah yeah a5 yeah it's like i've lost my top for whatever reason well it definitely didn't sound like that in the aria <laughs> okay breath um breath sirens yeah but also um and and that basically sounds like this and it's to coordinate keeping the rib cage um level and, and the bottom of the support without listening and, and tightening because our, our body will try to follow the sound and we'll grab in all sorts of places once our ear, we have to objectively listen, not subjectively listen. We can't judge our sound, but we have to be sure that we're singing the right pitches with the technique is that the technique is working that we're into, you know, that kind of like diagnostic, not, you know, I sound like garbage, you know, <laughs> not helpful to anybody because normally we don't sound nearly as bad as we think we do um so here's a breath siren you can start on any lower pitch up and over on an e so like start small and i just like i said to um i don't remember your first name it just says feral but uh this inverted this, hang on this in the idea of the inverted triangle right that's where we start the sound and if you hum which I think will also be helpful when people tell me that they have tightness above the staff. It's that somewhere earlier, the middle voice and the chest voice where those high notes are grounded from is, is not on the support. Yeah, in my experience. So humming lower on the staff will help you understand that coordination because those higher pitches are just frequencies and they're extensions of that initial coordination. You set the container. Rossini talked about a container of air. He talked to his students, you are containers of air. You are com containers of compression right here. Yep. Um, so uh, here's a siren. I, you do little revs first, I call them little circles and then up and over. How long can I decay that siren, right? Because that's the coordination of the song line. Humming. Um, also, uh, so like just humming five note scales in the middle voice, like starting on E, four. Am I lifting? No. Okay, great. I'm level. Add another note. I have some students that start on a whole step. <laughs> and in the middle voice, if they feel themselves lifting, then they go back. One of the exercises I do with my students early on is called duples. And it's just a series of whole steps starting on little C. Because if we're lifting in the low voice, we'll be off the support for the high pitches. So take a look. Um, it's often, I feel like under, not under examined or under scrutinized, but it's the middle voice. And the ability for the middle voice to be grounded, for the voice to drop down into chest register, because those cords are edge to edge, there's not any extra tension on them, then they can stretch for the high pitches and they can thicken for the low pitches. So um, yeah, is that helpful? Cool, all right. Anyway, I get so fired up about these questions. The scores are falling everywhere. My students say they need to get me a lab coat. I'm like a mad scientist. <laughs> I'm talking about technique. I'm like, oh, yes, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it all day. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, unfortunately, that is all the time we have. So thank you, everybody, for coming. And thank you, Emily, for that wonderful class. And thank you for all of our singers. You guys all did so good. Thank you, Emily.
Yeah, so welcome. And Reach out to me if you have any other questions. I'm oh, on the thank web you. And, and, and everybody did such a great job. And it's Rebecca. Oh, that's is my right. name. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You have a lot of people you have to learn. But everybody, best of luck. Continue, you know, all good wishes and um, just enjoy every part of the process because that's really thank you. Process is what makes it happen. Yes. yes. <laughs> so. All right. Have a great night. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.